today I'll be working on the original DJI Mavic Air. The gimbal is locked in the forward position and the aircraft will not take off. Looking at the remote, we're getting a main controller data error. Not this controller, but the one inside the drone. Checking status shows the accelerometer failed, gyroscope error, and gimbal error. Trying to calibrate the IMU does nothing, and after attempting a full firmware reset, we can assume the IMU has died. Normally there would be two screws hidden up here by the gimbal, one of which will be covered by a silicone droplet. This refurbished unit does not have either. So we can get right into prying. The top housing is held in by plastic clips, and while some people seem to struggle removing it, it unsnaps pretty easily. Just working your way around and feeling for the clips, popping them up one by one until all have been released. Hey look, a fifth propeller! With the top removed, we're able to see the GPS module located toward the rear, and a fan that keeps the internals cool under the heavy battery discharge. The plastic accent is held in with adhesive and a few clips. It's flexible enough that it isn't likely to break. Then we've got several identically sized Phillips head screws to remove. This part is really important. These tabs are part of a ribbon cable that can be ripped if these tabs aren't unlatched. With the screws removed and the memory card and USB door opened, the top midframe is free to come off. Toward the rear is a copper colored metal bracket that secures the ribbons for the rear and lower obstacle avoidance sensors. On the left side is a single screw bracket that secures another flexible ribbon. Next I'll disconnect the LEGO style connectors for those obstacle sensors, as well as the one I just uncovered on the left. Another metal bracket is fitted just under the fan. It's held in with four differently sized Phillips head screws. It can be slid up and out from under the fan. Now the fan can be taken off, but I'll leave it connected, just placing it off to the side. There are two antenna lines running under it that need to be disconnected. One of them is routed through a small trench between EMI shields. There are three more LEGO style connectors to unlatch. The center ribbon is for image transmission. The connector and wires are very fragile, so extra care needs to be taken to detach it from either side before pulling up. With everything detached, it's time to pull the logic board up and out, which can be a little tricky thanks to the IMU module being mounted on four rubber dampeners. This allows the IMU to function free of vibration from the motors. The module is held in with three Phillips screws. Carefully suspending the module allows us to disconnect the single LEGO connector that was under the housing. Removing the four rubber dampeners is about as fun as trying to reattach them. The rubber gaskets need to be pinched and pushed through this plastic piece. Once all four are pushed through, this plastic piece can be pulled away, and it reveals a final tiny Phillips screw that needs to be removed. There are two plastic clips on either side of the module that need to be opened, and they're pretty breakable too. But once the little plastic plate is removed, the IMU has been revealed. The IMU is absolutely coated in blue thermal compound, which is interesting considering there's no thermal heatsink nearby for it to dissipate heat into. I'll pry it up and out of the housing, grabbing our replacement IMU, which was the only one available on eBay in the US and listed as not new, work good, I'll get that pressed down into its new forever home. Now I'll go in reverse order, attaching the plastic piece and tightening its screw. The ribbon is threaded into this retainer clip. And now comes arguably the hardest part of this repair, reattaching the dampeners. They need to be pinched and pulled through, and it's pretty tedious. I'll save you the boring parts by skipping ahead. The IMU is reconnected to the board, then I'll tighten the three securing screws. board's dropped into place, and we can start reconnecting all the ribbons and antennas we unlatched before. Don't forget to route the antenna line through the shields before laying the fan back down. Gently press the image transmission connector into place. I'll tighten all the brackets back down with their respective screws. Once everything is back on, it's time to put the midframe back down. Remember those little tabs that I said were important? They're still important, so threading them up and through the hole should be done before fully installing the midframe. We're in the home stretch now, just 10 screws left, or 
12 if yours has the under gimbal screws, you'll want to make sure the memory card door is lined up properly too. I'll press down the plastic accent piece. I'll get these tabs pressed firmly over the housing before finally clipping the top cover in place. Let's get the battery loaded in and this powered on. Aircraft status is now normal and ready to go. I'll spin up the motors briefly to make sure it's willing to take off. Then reattach the props. Thanks a ton for joining me. I'll see you next time.